It was uh, on an alignment of an old railway line which closed down. It's, it's undervalued how much people use it for a escape from mental health, um, health and wellbeing. So my name's Andrew Sharp. I'm from the East Gippsland Rail Trail Committee of Management. So it's approximately 95 kilometres long, which is um, the whole length of the East Gippsland Rail Trail between Vansdale and Orbost. And we manage that whole reserve, yeah, for all its attributes for recreation and environment purposes. So our involvement with the East Gippsland Community Foundation was a project to uh, help enhance the uh, native vegetation and, and manage pest plants on the Rail Trail Reserve. The works really benefit the people um, along the length of the trail. There's multiple small towns and communities and they really love seeing people out on the trail working. We've partnered with um, Envite, so that's uh, an organisation that employs and trains people and undertakes environment programs. We're really sort of thankful that People have had the foresight to set up this foundation so that those funds could be utilised in the local community to employ people and undertake really beneficial environment programs and jobs. The Monaro Centre is a mud brick um, building that was built in the uh, mid 80s by First Nations people. It was taken over by Han Valley uh, Winery. The old winery building itself has been sitting idle since about 2012 and has fallen into disrepair. It, it was, it was a, in a sad state. My name's Irene Burt. I'm representing the Can Valley District Representative Group. We received funding for the restoration of the Monaro Centre in Can River. So the ambition for the grant was to revitalise the area. After the bushfires and through COVID, there was no one coming through our town where every day there's hundreds of cars. One of the, the main things that, that still sticks out to me today, and you can see it as you walk into the kitchen, are these gorgeous timber windows. When I asked the contractor, where did you get the, the beautiful new windows? He said, they're the existing windows. I've just scrubbed them up and oiled them a bit and they look fantastic. And in the, in the main room, the ceiling is done with paper bark and it's just beautiful. And the spindles on the stairway still got the original paper bark on them. So it's just beautiful, yeah. Today we're here with emergency services um, conducting an event for the community for fire preparedness. Today's just one example of the events that we could have here. We're thinking of weddings, birthdays, yoga classes, pottery, exhibitions, markets. You could even use it as a hot desking place. And I'm excited to see how people choose to use this space. I'd really like to thank the East Gippsland Community Foundation for supporting us in our endeavour with restoring the, the Monaro Centre. So the team effort that's gone into um, restoration of this building has included all of the tradies, that the locals, uh, businesses who've given their time freely and some of their labour freely, the volunteers who've helped support getting the, the project up and running and also our First Nations people who without this wonderful building we wouldn't be here. Stories of Influence is an, a storytelling event that's been happening for about 10 years and it's an event that brings the community to, to share stories that uh, sometimes have been forgotten uh, but that they kind of they lie on people's minds and hearts. And as part of that, we had a dinner with some storytelling on the Friday night. And then we had a Legends game on the Saturday in Swifts Creek. And it was about you know, bringing memories and memorabilia of the long history of uh, football from Lake Tyres Aboriginal Trust. Yes, thank you. So all the women wore Lake Tyres for that day. I was young. The idea come around, we started hearing word, and next thing you know we're 
you know, putting on a jumper and running out. It was very excited even when we first heard about it. I played juniors the first year and uh, it took us a couple of games. So this event was uh, organized by many, many volunteers that put uh, many hours of, of their own time and included Helen Schill, which is the director and the original founder of Stories of Influence. I think the, the East Gippsland Community Foundation understood that things don't always run smoothly and, uh, or that need more time to, for things to happen and, and especially organizing an event like this just with volunteers. They were always very understanding on that and they were um, with us along the journey. So I, I, I'd say that overall we had you know, 150, 200 people involved with, with the event, which I think it was, it was great. Being involved in the Tambun Petrie Association keeps me fairly busy. I found that um, when you retire and you become a volunteer, you don't have any weekends off. The Tambun Township is situated on Tambun Inlet, which is 29 kilometres from Can River. When I retired down there, I wanted to go down there. I wanted to do my own thing. However, after the fires, we realised that you have to work as a community. That's where our association um, came into being. Our project set out to build our resilience because we know that in an event like a bushfire or flood, in the first instance we're going to be by ourselves. We needed some type of tractor with a mulch on it. So we're using that to keep the uh, fuel load down to more manageable things. To be able to Complete this project by the purchase of the tractor and the mulcher has made the community feel a lot safer. The reason the East Gippsland Community Foundation is so much easier to work with, they've got people on the ground here. They've done a lot of great work, not just for Tamboon, but from a lot of, for a lot of the other small communities around here. The Wellness Collective was established by five local women really to help the local community rejuvenate itself and thrive again. After the 1920 Black Summer bushfires, we quick, pretty quickly recognised that Mallacoota needed to have a year-round economy to be able to thrive again. So the Wilderness Collective is working to establish new social enterprises, knowledge development to help educate and thrive new entrepreneurs into the future, and a co-working collaborative space, which we're sitting in at the moment. The project was to establish and fit out a co-working space for Malakuta, for micro and small businesses, and also as a home for the Wilderness Collective. We have a high-speed internet, we've got um, a range of laptop computers, we've got uh, software for editing and graphic design programs. Uh, we have a little meeting caravan space. I think the, the collective really helps to be a bit of a, um, a uniting force. We bring together a lot of people for collaboration. You can have a job that is based in the city but live in a beautiful place like Malakuta and that's a real game changer. That would not be possible without uh, you know, the high speed internet and, and a facility like this. So full acknowledgement to the East Gippsland Community Foundation for funding us and taking that leap of faith because our project, it doesn't fit a lot of boxes. So to be able to have that flexibility for them to fund us was just incredible. And just acknowledge as well, the families, carers and the children themselves who so willingly shared their stories. And the culmination of that was this project with the hope of making some change into the future. My name is Jodie Simpson. I'm a parent volunteer on the Children with Additional Needs Working Group. But the most important job I have in this process is being a mum of two kids with a disability. 
The funding from the East Gippsland Community Foundation enabled us to do six different projects, which came as a result of some research that we'd done around trying to understand the impacts of significant emergency events on families that have kids with a disability. So across community, 18 families and carers now have emergency plans in place. 60 emergency responders and managers now know about our work and we're really hoping that that, that is continued. The other uh, outcome for us was the systemic changes, so advocating quite strongly around some policy areas, uh, including accommodation and um, the vulnerable persons register. Everything that we have learned has been from our community. So, um, you know, it's our way to give back and to honour that contribution that they've made so that we can all try and make a more inclusive environment for our kids in our community going forward. My name is Isaac Carnet and I'm representing the Community Recovery Committee of Erin Andrew to Snowy. So Gungar is a very remote place and as part of that remoteness it's difficult to access internet. In, in one of the community meetings um, there's, there was the need uh, expressed about these two teenage girls to to have a place where they could do their school work. And we put that into the Skipsland Community Foundation. And, and I think from there, it was, it was pretty easy to, to obtain the funds. And I think from the time that we had that conversation until the co-working uh, was done, it was about six months. So the co-working space in, in Gungra, it's a, a reuse uh, old school building of the Gungra school. And pretty much what the grant uh, managed to do for us is to install like eight working stations and also paid for one year of uh, Starlink internet. It was an underutilized space, but also it's a place where people kind of mingle. Gungra co-working space also helps uh, Gungra respond to uh, future crises like bushfires. It provides like, you know, a, a working space for emergency services to come and utilize. I think it's been great to work with the East Gippsland Community Foundation and the way that they are able to build the relationships with the communities and understand their needs and then from there uh, it's easy to obtain the help that's needed because those relationships are already there. Uh, my name is Reno Raju. I'm a participant of Gippsland Community Leadership Program and uh, I'm also a recipient of uh, Gippsland Community Foundation's uh, scholarship. My heart is always uh, towards uh, my local community. It's going to open up uh, various doors where I can uh, talk to the local community, understand the heartbeat and know what they really want for their community. So that's what um, I'm looking forward in the future. Uh, we get to do this community project, which was uh, Stories of Influence 2023 program. This was a three-day event for Lake Thais Aboriginal Tr Trust, and it went really well. And I was really thrilled to see all the outcomes and all the um, stories that have been um, told. Strand Community Leadership Program is a brilliant program that's set up for training future leaders and emerging leaders. So I get the privilege of meeting various people across uh, Gippsland. They come from various walks of life. I get to know about their stories and learn from their past experience. So that's a brilliant opportunity. East Gippsland Community Foundation is a fantastic place. I'm so lucky to get a scholarship through them and I would recommend uh, all the uh, young people to apply for this scholarship. So in the future, knowing that there will be accessible spaces for them to just be themselves, to learn, play and, and grow.
My name's Amber Wade. We're working on the project Quaranook Wrap, which means meeting place. We've designed a space for the young people of all Boston surrounding areas to come around and just be themselves. So we've incorporated a comfy hangout area. We've also provided tables where we can all sit together and have meals together. They can come and try different activities and find what it is that they like to do. For a lot of families in this area, finance is a burden. So creating this space has been fantastic for the youth. They're all welcome here and many ideas and dreams have, have been flown from this place. In 2024, we'll be working on a project which will involve disengaged youth to come and learn skills that can lead that to be a lifelong career for them. Everybody in this community was on board on providing a space for the young people. Uh, without the support of the East Gippsland Community Foundation, this would not have been possible. And we are hoping that in the future, they will continue to support so as we can keep running this fantastic space that we've already set up. And done. <laughs>